The 12th pick in the 2011 NBA draft, the Utah Jazz select Kawhi Leonard from San Diego State University. Throughout his career, Kawhi Leonard has had the advantage of learning from the San Antonio Spurs organization. His personality and play style both fit in San Antonio as a defensive-minded team player. As the Spurs like to run a selfless offense where there is no one certain player that is the entire offense. This has really helped Kawhi Leonard develop into one of the best two-way players in the NBA. A lockdown defender and now a great scorer. But what if Kawhi was never picked by the Pacers? What if he was never traded to the Spurs? What if he wasn't placed in the picture-perfect situation in San Antonio, but placed in a solid situation in Utah? How much would Utah change? How would the NBA landscape change? As you can see, it changes things a lot. In the 2011 NBA draft, the Jazz held the number three pick, where they selected Ennis Cantor. What people often forget is that the Jazz also held the 12th pick, where they originally picked Alec Burks to play shooting guard alongside Gordon Hayward, whom they believed to be a small forward. In this scenario, however, the Jazz draft Kawhi Leonard in order to play small forward and to develop Gordon Hayward alongside him as a shooting guard. With this change in draft selections, the Pacers no longer have a wing to draft and trade to the Spurs, as Alec Burks does not fit in the Spurs system with his ball-dominant style of play, and Burks now falls to the Blazers. Since the Pacers couldn't draft a wing to trade for George Hill, the Pacers end up drafting Nolan Smith to help repair their damages at point guard as he becomes the next NBA D-League star. The 2011 NBA offseason had the Spurs looking for a wing since they no longer have Kawhi. They find a trade partner in the Blazers and send George Hill to the Blazers for Nicholas Batum straight up. The 2012 NBA season didn't see many notable changes with Kawhi on the Jazz. The notable changes occur with the Jazz, Pacers, Spurs, and Blazers as the Jazz win four more games with Kawhi. The Pacers lose three more games without George Hill and the Spurs and Blazers both win five more games with their additions. LeBron is still MVP and Kyrie is still Rookie of the Year. The 2012 NBA Finals was still won by the Miami Heat over the Thunder in five games as LeBron captures his first NBA title. The only notable change in the Western Conference playoffs is that the Jazz end up losing in seven games to the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round. The 2012 NBA Draft Lottery sees the Kings finish with a fourth worst record and luck into the number one pick, which means... The Sacramento Kings select Anthony Davis. Yes, the Kings lose two more games and land Anthony Davis to go along with DeMarcus Cousins as the two ex-Wildcats actually complement each other well and make the future in Sacramento brighter. Harrison Barnes goes to the Raptors, the Blazers still take Damian Lillard which will matter in a moment, and the Warriors end up settling for Terrence Ross. Moving on to the offseason, George Hill signs with the Pacers since he wants to be a starter and the Blazers want to give Dame significant minutes. Dwight still forces a trade to the Lakers in efforts to form a super team, and the Thunder still trade James Harden in efforts to save some money. And now we move on to the 2013 NBA season that only sees one significant trade. The Grizzlies are looking to move Rudy Gay still, but Toronto is no longer an option since they already have Harrison Barnes, who looked like a future all-star at the time, so they didn't want to take away from his development. Instead, Gay gets traded to the Wizards for Bradley Beal and Trevor Ariza. The 2013 season brings some changes in the standings. The Jazz win six more games as Kawhi starts to make big contributions. The Lakers lose two more games and drop out of the playoffs as a big talk is about how their super team failed so bad. The Grizzlies and Spurs both win 60 games on the season with their additions. LeBron is still MVP and Dame is still Rookie of the Year. Other than that, the playoffs are largely unaffected and it still plays out with the Heat capturing a title over the Spurs, this time in 6 due to the loss of Kawhi, as in the process the Jazz get eliminated in the first round once more by the Grizzlies in 7 games. The Pelicans finish with the worst record in the association, but get the second pick as the Bobcats win the lottery to select Victor Oladipo. The Pelicans take Cody Zeller to be their franchise big, since their original franchise big has been replaced by a career reserve. The Magic take Ben McLemore since they needed a shooting guard, and Nerlens Noel goes to the Wizards. On a side note, the Cavs still take Anthony Bennett, as nothing has changed to stop them from wasting their pick. And the Nets still trade for KG and Pierce, as nothing has changed to stop them from wasting their future. In the offseason, Dwight still goes to the Rockets after a bad LA experience. The Sixers still interested in trading Drew Holiday, move him to the Jazz in a deal that sends Ennis Cantor, Gorgie Jang, and a 2014 first round pick to the Sixers for Holiday. 
The Jazz also trade a second round pick to the Pelicans for Robin Lopez as they need a starting center and Paul Millsap stays in Utah. Because of Millsap staying, the Hawks no longer want to win now after missing out on Dwight and Millsap, so they decide to tank. They start by trading Al Horford and Kyle Korver to the Wizards for Nene and a 2014 first round pick. They then trade Lou Williams to the Kings for Tyreek Evans. And speaking of the Kings, they also end up trading a top 10 protected 2014 first round pick, Jason Thompson and CJ McCollum to the Pelicans for Eric Gordon, setting up an opportunity to win now. This brings us into the 2014 NBA season where we see some drastic changes. Before we get into record changes, we must note that the Blazers traded Will Barton for Tyreek Evans. Getting into record changes, the Jazz win a tremendous amount of 31 more games as the biggest winners this season. The Grizzlies win 12 more games, riding the momentum from the end of last season. The Hawks lose 5 more games and drop out of the playoffs without their stars, which allows the Knicks to jump into the 8th seed. The Spurs lose 3 more games without Kawhi. The Pelicans lose 7 more games without Davis, and the Kings win 7 more games due to the front court of Davis and Cousins. Kevin Durant is still MVP, but this time Victor Oladipo wins Rookie of the Year as he actually contributes to a playoff team. The 2014 playoffs has some changes, with the big one being the Bulls winning in 5 over the Wizards due to no Nerlens Noel and the loss of Al Horford. Other than that, the Jazz get eliminated by the Clippers in 7 games since Drew Holiday was injured. The Grizzlies, however, advanced to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in franchise history to face the Thunder in the Conference Finals. Unfortunately for the Thunder, they can't defeat one of the best defensive teams ever, along with Marcus Gasol taking his game to another level after being furious finishing second behind Durant in MVP voting. The Eastern side remains the same, with the Heat going on to face the Memphis Grizzlies this time in the Finals. A potential 3 P and a potential first NBA title in franchise history are both at stake. Believe it or not though, the Memphis Grizzlies defeat the Miami Heat in 5 games with Marcus Gasol having a field day on the Heat big men, capturing a finals MVP and the Memphis Grizzlies winning their first title in franchise history. This is where analysts call into question whether or not LeBron actually has a desire to win at this point in his career. The 2014 NBA Draft saw a lot of potential to produce valuable starting caliber talent. The Minnesota Timberwolves end up lucking into the first pick of the draft after finishing with the ninth worst record in the NBA, and because of this, they select Andrew Wiggins and no longer need to trade Kevin Love to do so. Oh, the irony. It will cost them Zach Levine, however, who gets taken by the Hawks, and the Lakers draft Dante Exum in place of the Jazz in hopes he would be their franchise point guard and the Pelicans take Julius Randle in hopes that he can be their franchise power forward. The 2014 offseason saw the Grizzlies being forced to let Trevor Ariza walk since they want to save for Marcus Gasol and Ariza signs with the Wizards. Kevin Love trade rumors still continued to dominate the offseason headlines, however. Cleveland is no longer able to trade for Love since they no longer have the assets to make a deal work. Instead, we look towards the Rocky Mountains. Yes, Kevin Love gets traded to the Denver Nuggets for Kenneth Fareed, Wilson Chandler, and a 2015 first round pick that is top 3 protected. The Nuggets still feel the need to make moves to give help for Kevin Love and sign Lance Stevenson as the Bobcats no longer need him with Oladipo. The Nuggets weren't done yet however as they traded Ty Lawson and two future first round picks to the Bucks for Giannis Atentacumpo and Brandon Knight. The Bucks thought Jabari would be the star that they needed and didn't want Giannis to get in the way of that. LeBron returns to Cleveland in order to give his hometown a ring as he sees good talent in Cleveland. In the process, he is able to recruit Marcin Gortat as well as Channing Frye. Onto the Jazz, they match any offer for Gordon Hayward and sign Patty Mills as he sees a brighter future in Utah compared to San Antonio. Chandler Parsons signs with the Hornets since the Hornets still wanted to sign a bigger name free agent, which in turn sends Dallas into rebuild mode. Pierce ends up signing with the Chicago Bulls in order to give a veteran presence to help Derrick Rose and Jimmy Butler get along and to give big time playoff performances. The 2015 NBA season saw some significant trades. The Suns still choose Eric Bledsoe over Isaiah Thomas and Goran Dragic and still send them to their previous locations. The Isaiah Thomas trade ends up being different with the Lakers, Celtics, and Suns working out a trade that sends Jordan Clarkson, Marcus Thornton, and the Celtics 2016 first round pick to the Suns and a Celtics 2016 second round pick to the Lakers as Jordan Clarkson hadn't entirely broken out yet and they still have Dante Exum. Before all of that happened however, 
The Celtics and Knicks agreed to a trade that sent Rajon Rondo and Gerald Wallace to the Knicks for Amari Stoudemire, Amon Shumpert, Shane Larkin, a 2015 and 2017 first round pick with the 2017 pick being top 5 protected which will be a huge mistake for the Knicks. In turn, the Knicks do not trade J.R. Smith which means Dion Waiters does not go to the Thunder and Timofey Mozgov does not get traded to the Cavs. Also, Ennis Cantor does not get traded to the Thunder since he is now on the Sixers and they do not trade Michael Carter Williams since the Bucks already have Ty Lawson and the Sixers do not decide to blow up their team this time and instead decide to grow their players together. What a concept, Sam Hankey. The 2015 season was originally dominated by the Golden State Warriors. It still happens, but not as much as they lose 8 more games this time, and the Jazz are the new dominant team by winning 23 more games. The Knicks see some improvement with Rondo, but not enough of it for him to stay, as Carmelo still goes down with knee surgery, and they win only 10 more games. The Nuggets win 16 more games and get into the playoffs, kicking out New Orleans in the process, who loses 18 more games. The Spurs still don't have Kawhi Leonard, which is a problem, and lose three more games on the season while having to face a potential title contender in the Memphis Grizzlies. The Hawks lose a massive 35 more games without their stars. The Hornets make the playoffs winning 13 more games, led by Kemba and Oladipo, and the Raptors end up with the third seed winning five more games with their best season in franchise history, which leaves us with, yes, the Washington Wizards winning the Eastern Conference title, winning 56 games on the season, highlighted by an MVP season by John Wall and a terrific supporting cast. Oh, and Andrew Wiggins still wins Rookie of the Year. The 2015 NBA playoffs bring some changes. The Clippers still blow a 3-1 lead to the Rockets, this time in the first round, and an upcoming free agent in DeAndre Jordan is more than a little unhappy with this. In the Eastern Conference, the Raptors lose in the first round with back-to-back postseason meltdowns as Paul Pierce brings the Bulls together to reach their full potential as a team. In the second round, the Jazz defeat the Rockets in 5 games and the Warriors do the same to the Grizzlies as Curry is furious in finishing in second in MVP voting behind John Wall. And wouldn't you know it, the Chicago Bulls defeat the Cleveland Cavaliers pulling off the upset of the century against a heavily favored Cavaliers team. Because of this, there were all kinds of rumors and conspiracies running rampant suggesting that LeBron was still too shocked and upset about losing to a team that was on paper the second least talented championship winner in NBA history besides the 0-4 Pistons. But there were other critics suggesting that there were chemistry issues between Kyrie and the rest of the gang around LeBron that was unrepairable overnight. Or should I say, over season. No? Let's continue. The Eastern Conference Finals sets up a matchup between the determined Bulls and the up-and-coming Wizards, where the MVP John Wall led the Wizards past the Bulls in six games to go to the NBA Finals making this the greatest moment in Wizards history, besides of course the Dark Lord being defeated for all eternity by Harry. Over on the west side, we have the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors facing off in the conference finals. However, it wasn't as good as advertised with Holiday getting injured, which resulted in a sweep by the Golden State Warriors. This left an NBA Finals matchup between the Washington Wizards and Golden State Warriors. Unfortunately for the Wizards, Steph was hoping for this matchup to happen and the Warriors end up winning as Steph came to show why he was the best player in that season by coming through in the clutch and the moment got to John Wall which brought a title back to the bay for the first time in 40 years with Stephen Curry of course being named Finals MVP. After that eventful postseason, let's get into the 2015 draft where the Wolves and the Lakers end up with the top two picks in the loaded draft class. The Wolves obviously drafted Cat still, but when it came to the second pick, the Lakers end up forming a trade with the Jazz. Drew Holiday, as you know, has spent his whole time in Utah being injured, and this left into question whether he could be a reliable piece on a championship roster. So the Jazz end up forming a trade with the Los Angeles Lakers that sent a disgruntled Derek Favors, Robin Lopez, a 2016 and 2017 first round pick to the Lakers for the number two pick, which was D'Angelo Russell. The reason why the Lakers did this trade is because they had Dante Exum and liked what they saw out of him and also were very high on Derek Favors. The Nets now hold the fifth pick and that means... The Brooklyn Nets select Kristaps Porzingis. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets select Porzingis with the Hawks pick and dodge a bullet by the Hawks tanking for that season and avoid getting next to nothing after that Pearson Garnett trade. The Pelicans take Moutier to be their franchise point guard, the Celtics take Winslow with the Knicks pick that they acquired in the Rondo trade, 
The Hawks get Miles Turner to pair with Dennis Schroeder, and the Pacers were targeting a big man, so they take Frank Kaminsky. Wait, does that mean? The Sacramento Kings select Devin Booker from the University of Kentucky. The Sacramento Kings take Devin Booker with a 12th pick, giving them a big three of Cousins, Davis, and Booker. If there are any Kings fans watching this, I'll let you take a pause after seeing this frustration. Back Kings fans? Alright, let's continue, shall we? The Heat take Kelly Oubre, which seems like a downgrade right now, and the Spurs take Justin Anderson in hopes he can be their franchise small forward. The 2015 NBA offseason sees many different changes and many big moves. The first is DeAndre Jordan, who signs with the Charlotte Hornets as he was tired of losing in the playoffs. But hold on, the Los Angeles Clippers and Clipper fans proceed to lock DeAndre in his house to make him re-sign with the Clippers in a shocking turn of events. But look, there's Kemba, Vic, and Michael coming to rescue DeAndre from the craziness of LA and LA fans. DeAndre officially signs with the Hornets to form an exciting team in Charlotte. Because of this, Chris Paul trade rumors center the subject of the offseason as we look towards the city of basketball. Yes, CP3 gets traded to the Pacers for George Hill, Frank Kaminsky, a 2016 and 2018 first round pick. LaMarcus Aldridge originally signed with the Spurs, but took one look at San Antonio and saw no Kawhi Leonard and no future championship opportunities, and that meant no LaMarcus. He stays in Portland. Because of this, Wesley Matthews also stays in Portland and Davis West stays in Indiana since they now have CP3 and the Spurs aren't going to compete anytime soon. The Blazers work out a sign and trade with the Pacers that sends Hibbert to the Blazers for Alec Burks as they already had a surplus of wings. Drew Holiday ends up being traded to the Knicks for Timofey Mozgov since the Jazz need a backup center. The Kings make a three-team trade with the Magic and Wolves that sends Eric Gordon to the Wolves, Tobias Harris to the Kings, and Otto Porter to the Magic. In terms of other free agents, Klay Thompson and Draymond Green are signed to cheaper extensions since Steph Curry played some of the best basketball we have ever seen, and Klay and Dre are, were just Pau Gasol and Lamar Odom 2.0. Monte signs with the Rockets, Thad Young signs with the Hawks since he wants to be a starter, and the Celtics trade Kelly Olynyk and Evan Turner to the Sixers for Ennis Cantor to give them a true center. Before the season, the Hawks end up trading Jeff Teague to the Kings for Rajon Rondo and a 2019 first round pick to give Dennis Schroeder a mentor that he idolized when watching the NBA and learning basketball. And now the Kings suddenly go from being one of the worst ran front offices in the NBA to being one of the best and most opportunistic ran front offices. This leaves us with the 2016 NBA season providing one question. Where will Blake Griffin be traded? The Clippers were unable to work out a regular season deal, but still have another year. However, without Paul and Jordan, they lose 18 more games on the season. The Spurs and Warriors end up losing more games, and their spots in NBA history. The Jazz are the new best team in the NBA as they win 22 more games with Kawhi emerging on offense, Gordon Hayward emerging on defense, and contributions from Millsap, Russell, and Gobert. The Grizzlies lose three more games and drop out of the playoffs due to the loss of Gasol, Conley, and Beal during the season. The Kings are the replacement as they finally break through and win 17 more games to make their first playoff berth since Chris Webber and company. The Nuggets make the playoffs again, winning 17 more games, and the Mavs and Pelicans both dip in the standings without their stars. On the east side, the Pacers and Wizards improve on the season with their new stars, the Hawks win 35 games with Schroeder and company coming into their own, and the Hornets win 50 more games with an NBA championship on their minds. Steph still wins the MVP, although not unanimous, as he has a new killer mentality and Cat is still Rookie of the Year. The last thing is that the Sixers aren't the worst team in NBA history since they actually kept their young core intact. The 2016 playoffs provide some interesting matchups on paper. The Warriors had to go through the Nuggets in six tough games and the Thunder beat the Blazers in six games since Roy Hibbert forgot how to play basketball. Over on the east side, the Wizards lose to the Hornets in five games, a disappointment from their finals appearance a year ago, and the Pacers defeat the Celtics in seven games as the Celtics' lack of a true superstar showed when they didn't know who to go to in crunch time. This left our first second round matchup in the East be between the Hornets and the Rat. No, hold on, the Raptors have another playoff meltdown, upset of the century and what makes last year's Bulls-Cavs upset look like a straight up expectation. The Pacers have championships on their minds, but are ultimately no match for LeBron and lose in seven. Now we have the conference finals between the Jazz and Warriors, where the Jazz end up on top in a memorable seven game series. The Eastern Conference Finals provide a much more exciting new matchup 
with the Hornets and Cavs facing off. Despite a heroic effort from Kemba Walker, LeBron again is too much and the Cavs win in 7 hard fought games. This leaves us with a finals matchup between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Utah Jazz. This becomes the most watched finals in NBA history between two young wings going up against a top 3 player of all time at the very least. The Jazz are the ones that come out on top with Kawhi Leonard and the all around ability of the Utah Jazz being the decider in the 7 game series as Kawhi Leonard is your NBA Finals MVP. The 2016 NBA Draft has the Celtics getting the number 1 pick as the Nets finished with the worst record in the NBA but since Brooklyn wasted their future on KG and Pierce, the Celtics get the number 1 pick and draft Brandon Ingram. He doesn't stay a Celtic however which we will get to later. The Pelicans take Jalen Brown to go with their young core, the Lakers get Ben Simmons, the Nuggets take Buddy Heald, Jamal Murray goes to the Sixers, the Magic takes a bonus and actually keep him since they no longer have Oladipo, the Mavs take Portal, the Bulls get Chris, and the Grizzlies get Henry Ellison to be their heir to Zebo. In the original 2016 offseason, Kevin Durant made a firestorm full of hate by signing with the Warriors. Durant still goes to the Warriors but in a different way since the Thunder no longer have a solid supporting cast around him and Westbrook. Since the Warriors signed Clay and Dre to cheaper contracts since Steph production was higher and their productions were lower, all the Warriors have to do is trade Andrew Bogut to the Pacers for a second round pick and form a sign and trade to send T. Ross, Scal, and Tony Snell and two future first round picks to the Thunder for Kevin Durant. A risky strategy as they would just have to give up replaceable players to work out the contracts instead of getting rid of their bench and decimating their team, in a way. I'm sorry, did I say risky? I should have said obvious. Because the Thunder did not have what was perceived to be a title contender, people understood the decision more. They still weren't happy about it entirely, but they understood where Durant was coming from since the Warriors didn't have a starting caliber small forward anymore and the Thunder were noticeably worse. So they saw some rationale behind this instead of creating a new villain like they do every two years or so. I guess this really is a fantasy then. I'm sorry for the shot I fired there, but you will see how bad the NBA community is at some point, even if it isn't right now. Back to the offseason, the Warriors signed Dwayne Dedman since he wants to win and they have extra cap space and Zaza signs with the Spurs. The 2016 NBA offseason has many new headlines as well including Blake Griffin being traded to the Wolves. Yes, Blake Griffin and JJ Redick get traded to the Wolves for Eric Gordon, Ricky Rubio, Kenneth Fareed, and a 2017 first round pick. Jimmy Butler gets traded to the Celtics for Brandon Ingram, the 2017 Nets first round pick, and Avery Bradley as the Bulls choose Derrick Rose instead of Jimmy Butler and land a big time prize to take pressure off of Derrick Rose so that he can just focus on getting healthy again. The Thunder trades Serge Ibaka to the Cavs since they need him for Channing Frye, Ante Zizic, and Subhas Muhammad. Suddenly the Thunder enter rebuild mode for the first time in OKC and Russ does not re-sign with OKC so soon. Continuing on, the Celtics and Rockets work out a sign and trade that sends Ennis Cantor and Jeff Green to the Rockets for Dwight Howard which forms a small super team up in Boston with the new saying being, it feels like 08. The Pacers and Knicks also make a move that sends J.R. Smith to Indiana for Alec Burks in a deal that makes sense for both sides and now we head over to Brooklyn. Since the Nets missed out on Brandon Ingram and will potentially miss out on another top 5 draft pick, they decide to move some disgruntled veterans to get some young talent and assets. The Nets trade Brook Lopez to the Raptors for Harrison Barnes and Valens Eunice. The Nets also decide to move Mason Plumlee to the Blazers for Timothy Luwawu and Myers Leonard. Suddenly the Nets now have young talent and young assets that they can use to build around Zinger for the future and aren't faced with uncertainty. As for free agency, Powell signs with the Pacers, Evan Turner signs with Detroit since he couldn't get along with MCW on the court, but Toom signs with the Raptors, Noah stays in Chicago, Wade stays in Miami since the Heat had absolutely no shot at Durant, Joe Johnson signs with the Kings, Hibbert signs with Atlanta, and Rondo stays in Atlanta to continue to mentor a young point guard who idolizes him, and now we have reached the end. What a ride. And there you have it. By passing on Kawhi Leonard in the 2011 NBA Draft, the Jazz cost themselves the 2016 NBA Championship. But they weren't the only ones that changed. The Memphis Grizzlies won the 2014 NBA Championship, capturing their first in franchise history by trading Rudy Gay to the Wizards this time. John Wall was an NBA MVP, placing him in a future as a potential all-time great point guard. 
The Hornets have a promising future with Kemba, Oladipo, and Jordan to surround their valuable role players. Chris Paul is now on a team that has a much better chance at winning the NBA title compared to his current one. The Atlanta Hawks now have a really bright future instead of a questionable present with Schroeder, Levine, Turner, and Thad Young leading the charge. And lastly, the Sacramento Kings, currently viewed as one of the worst front offices in the association, are now viewed as one of the best and most opportunistic front offices that takes chances in the correct demeanor with a core of Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Devin Booker, Jeff Teague, and Tobias Harris that surely will be a future dynasty. With all of this greatness, we must go over the trash left behind that is in every experiment, and the largest piece of trash ended up being the San Antonio Spurs. No longer with a franchise player in Kawhi, no longer with a direction, the San Antonio Spurs lost out on the 2014 NBA title and are left with too many questions while searching for answers. The 2017 season now enters with Russell Westbrook trade rumors. No longer on a team with a young core to build around, Russ decides that he wants to be traded rather than to build up something in OKC, and the breakup of the Thunder's original core all pointed back to the James Harden trade. This situation began to remind a lot of analysts of the situation of the Orlando Magic in 1996 when they lost Shaq to the Lakers. LeBron James is now looked at as a guy that can't come together when the time matters most after an embarrassing finals loss to the Grizzlies in 14 and an even more embarrassing second round loss to the Bulls in 15 and will need to work much harder to save his legacy and fulfill his promise to the city of Cleveland. The Bucks traded away Giannis and now lean on Ty Lawson, Jabari, and Monroe to bring them to a championship containing stance and are faced with too many questions. Westbrook does see potential in Jabari so at least that counts for something. And while championships, accolades, and player recognition are obvious changes, this scenario should just show you how much player careers can be impacted with one decision by a front office. The list of players who are on different locations can go on forever, and as time passes, this alternate NBA will continue further away from our current NBA we know and love or hate. It really makes you think. Just how much the NBA can change if we ask ourselves, what if? Maybe it wouldn't have happened like this entirely, Maybe it wouldn't have happened like this at all, but maybe this doesn't stretch that far from the truth.